Hello, and welcome to episode six of Zen Talk. Today, we are going to be talking about Triera Biosciences, which is the wholly owned biotech subsidiary of Zentech, and specifically our Aptimer technology. So Zentech was in a fortunate position to license technology from McMaster University a couple of years ago in the Aptimer space. Aptimers, the best way to think about Aptimers is they are synthetic monoclonal antibodies. They're just single-stranded DNA that have a specific profile that binds to a target. And the importance of that, it's like an antibody in your system. If there's a foreign invader, a bacteria, a virus, your body generates antibodies that goes and binds to it. Your immune system kicks in and eliminates that pathogen from your system. Aptimers are simply the synthetic form of that. So we can program aptimers to go over uh, to, to attack almost any specific target, whether it be a, a virus, a bacteria, a cancer cell, uh, 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 an immune cell. So aptimers show tremendous promise. We, uh, we got uh, linked up with Dr. Yingfu Li, who is uh, world renowned in this space. He had developed a, an aptimer platform, developed, continued to build on technology that had been around for a couple of decades. And uh, through the work that him and his lab had, uh, had performed, generated performance of aptimers that had never been seen before. So as I said, we were in the fortunate position to be able to license this technology, and now we're working towards the commercialization of aptimers against a whole host of different uh, indications, including infectious disease. We've mentioned that we'll be moving into the oncology space, the immunology space, the neurology space. All of these are targets that we are uh, either currently looking at or will be looking at very shortly. With our Aptimer technology, uh, we had an announcement today. We announced the grant of $1.1 million from Innovation Solutions Canada to assist us in developing an Aptimer for H5N1, which is the avian influenza that has really reared its ugly head earlier this year and is making its way through livestock, both uh, cattle and birds and poses a potential significant threat to humans. So we started working on developing an H5N1 aptimer earlier this year. That development work continues. And now today we announced funding from the government of Canada because they've identified this as a significant potential threat uh, to human health. So with me today to talk about that is the Chief Science Officer of Triera Biosciences, Dr. Colin Vanderker. Colin, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Greg. Um, it's gl I'm glad to be here on Zen Talk for the very first time. I look forward to the other opportunities as well. And this is very significant news for Triera um, for three things. We have received this contract and it's a demonstration of the validation of our technology. Over a year ago, we applied for this for this, this contract in this testing stream, where we were proposing that the work that has already been developed with our SARS-CoV-2 asset or countermeasure that works as both a therapeutic or a prophylactic, that we could use this as a drug discovery, um, rapid drug discovery system and then to develop other countermeasures as well, or respond to other pandemic challenges, exactly like avian influenza. So what this, what this award or contract signifies is that the government of Canada has reviewed the data, has reviewed the work which we have done with McMaster University for SARS-CoV-2, and they have agreed with us that this is something that is worthy of of further development and could provide some very substantial safety countermeasures or pandemic countermeasures for Canadians. And so this is a, a great opportunity for further validation. The second thing that is really important is this contract actually awards us finances or money for the technology we've already developed. The technology is the rapid drug discovery system 
that Dr. Ying Fu Lee's team have already generated. So it's that rapid process of identifying, um, selecting aptamers for the specific target protein to neutralize it, and then to expand it into the multivalent platforms that, uh, that, that Dr. Lee's team has found so successful in that neutralization. So with this contract, we actually receive funding or money or being paid for using this research or using this rapid drug discovery platform. And so we're very excited about that. And so of the full value, approximately $800,000 plus or minus a bit is, is given for that. The third major significant aspect of this award is the sponsoring agency that is, that is sponsoring the work will be overseeing it and will be overseeing the validation of the end results. Now, I want to give a shout out to, to Monique Manegra, who is our Director of Government Relations. When we knew that we were had the potential to receive this contract, she was working really diligently to ensure that we were connecting to the right government agencies. And she did a fantastic job and we are so excited to be able to state that our, our, our agencies are, um, it's called HERC, and I'll explain what that is, and also DRDC. HERC is a brand new agency that has just started by the Government of Canada, and it's called the Health Emergency Response Canada. And the purpose of this agency is to advance life sciences, industrial capacities, and innovation to solve health threats to Canadians, to improve Canada's life science and medical countermeasures capability. And so they saw this multivalent aptamer technology and they want to see its potential. And there is opportunity as we are successful for further investment and further development, um, working exactly with this, this new agency which is really trying to accomplish what we see as one of the major futures of this multivalent technology, pandemic readiness, countermeasures that provide human health. Colin, other... just, just, just maybe right there, I just want to uh, uh, ask you, there, there's a, I believe, a similar group in the U.S. called mm. BARDA. Would, would HERC be similar to what BARDA is to the U.S.? Maybe not identical, but it's, it's trying to achieve similar objectives, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, anybody in the bioscience space knows that um, they look longingly down south um, towards BARDA as a very well-funded agency that invests in early research. Um, it, it invests in research and uh, countermeasures and, and pharmaceuticals in the full level of development. We've heard rumors that Canada has been interested in this type of approach, and now we're really seeing it being introduced. So. Um, we don't know what the budget is going to look like, probably not exactly where BARDA is, but for a Canadian response and a Canadian solution, we're very excited about this new new agency. Fantastic. Well, that is very exciting news. And obviously, we've been working on this for uh, quite a number of months, uh, but we had to get all the aspects of the contract put together, which have now been finalized, announced, that funding will start. And uh, maybe just really quickly, how long do you think the testing stream would take, Colin, to, to come up with a viable candidate? So, you know, ultimately, we hope that through the maturity of this technology, we'll be able to develop countermeasures within maybe six to eight weeks as pandemics emerge, which would be fantastic if, we, if you played back the tape with SARS-CoV-2. If we had this type of asset and this type of technology already developed, just think of the change, the dramatic change that would have happened within Canada, maybe globally with us to be able to respond to it. For this particular testing stream, we're going more conservative and realistic. We have six months, five to six months to develop the optimized countermeasure. And then afterwards, it's going to be tested in, in animal models. And that testing will then be another additional three months. Great. And then and then beyond that, the program can expand with success. It'll expand and there'll be more investment going into it in the further mm -hmm. development of the 
of the actual therapeutic or prophylactic itself. So uh, you can see why we're um, over the moon excited about it, getting the recognition from this new uh, HERC that Colin alluded to is a is a really big deal. And Canada is, is putting their money where their mouth is. They're getting behind this. Uh, I said once again has sponsored this. This is under the I said umbrella. I said has been absolutely fantastic and great partners with us, helping fund a lot of our research and work. So we're really thrilled about that. So with that, I mean we have many, many more exciting things to come on uh, Aptimers and and Triera. We're going to be moving into different indications. Uh, once we have a little more information and uh, some contracts finalized there, we will discuss that as well. We'll be moving into some other pathways with respect to, uh, to Aptimers, looking at how AI, artificial intelligence can play a role. Because remember, these are digital sequences. So there is a role, potentially a significant role for AI moving forward. So now that we have this funding under our belt and we start to move it, we're going to be moving into, uh, we're looking at moving into a new lab. Uh, getting some equipment, getting the lab appropriately staffed. So there's lots and lots of big things coming for Triera. So wanted to thank you, Colin, for joining me today and giving uh, this fantastic update on Triera. Uh, and we look forward to bringing you more news uh, as, uh, as it comes. So thanks, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Zen Talk.